Um, let's make a start. So, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, some of the names I recognise have been on a few webinars before, if not all of them at webinars before. Um, there's a few customers that I know well in there as well. So, thanks for joining. For those of you um, who are new to Marketer Hub and new to our webinars, quick introduction. Um, I'm Simon Besley. Our company is Newton Print. It's a family company started by my dad in uh, 1983, so something like 37 years ago. Um, I've been here for 11 years now, and it's been great fun. Um, I, I wasn't press ganged into it. I love marketing and I love print. And um, there's nothing like the smell of freshly, freshly printed books and brochures. And it's it's just. I mean, you should smell the smell in the factory if you think that's good. Um, and if you think that new book smells nice, then you should smell our scratch and sniff, which is one of the things that we're really good at. You can see here um, some of the images. The bottom central image is a project we did recently for Moonpig, partnering with KFC, and it's actually a scratch and sniff KFC chicken smell, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> and it actually does smell a bit like KFC fried chicken, if you like that sort of thing. It was a bit of a publicity stunt, but it got them some really good PR. Um, as for Marketer Hub, I started it three years ago. Um, it was mainly to provide networking events for marketers around the Southwest, and it's sort of grown and expanded. And now, because we can't meet physically, um, we're doing webinars, which, of course, are right, open to a much wider audience because we don't have to drive to get anywhere. Um, so this is our says on there it's our first online webinar apologies i didn't edit it it's actually our fifth online webinar we've been running them since end of march um just to try and help marketers during lockdown with some useful relevant engaging content today i've got um sarah wallace from raw mail market reach um seems to have uploaded the wrong slides as well so i'll just skip that one straight <laughs> to sarah's intro um i'm going to hand over to sarah now sarah's got a great few secrets um of direct mail to share with us and then we'll end as usual the last 15 20 minutes or so with some question and answers so think of some good questions type them in the chat as you think of them rather than try and remember them at the end um and we'll get to them at the end and answer them so sarah over to you yes yeah, so hopefully i will be able to move through my slides so it's all good um i've worked for raw mail group for a really long time so 20 years at raw mail and I've covered every role I think there is to do at Raw Mail. So I've worked in parcels and I've worked in the media specialist side of the business for seven years now. Um, so I've got quite a lot of experience in charity, retail, retail and travel were the sectors that I was most closely aligned to in that time. But most people don't actually realise that Raw Mail um, is quite a big player in the media world. So can mail survive in the digital world is a challenge that I'm often given by my clients. And the answer is yes. At times of uncertainty, um, people like to come back to mail as a channel because it's tried, trusted and tested. And also mail reaches areas that other media channels just cannot get to. So um, it's something that people physically touch. And that's what makes it very different than all the other channels that we have. Um, Raw Mail actually created Market Reach in 2011. And the reason was that we actually realised after 500 years that we were the third biggest media owner in the whole of the UK behind Google and ITV. And advertisers actually spend 1.1 billion in mail each year. And that's excluding the print and production costs. So it is quite a massive channel. So basically, Raw Mail formulated market reach. Um, so they started to behave more like a media owner and we're the media owner division of Raw Mail. And what we do is we actually support our clients and agencies to get more out of the channel of direct mail. And that's addressed and unaddressed mail. And all of the services we provide are free of charge to our clients. So it's quite surprising the level of stuff that we actually do. Unfortunately, free sometimes equates to not of value for some clients but some of this work that raw mail will actually do for you um, would cost a fortune if an agency was to do it for you so it's actually quite a well-kept secret and there are quite a plethora of big clients that actually use these services that people just aren't aware of 
So we actually offer insight into the whole market of mail and print. So you can actually look at what different audiences are likely to do to respond. There is actually now a measurement tool for mail. So in the past, it was very diff difficult to attribute um, costs and return on mail mailing campaigns. So now we actually have a tool that you can log on to for free and get insight to see what sort of response rates and commercial actions you can expect to get from a mail piece or door drop. It's called Jick Mail, but the insight is actually there for you to download. So you can actually have a look at the kind of commercial journeys that people will take from receiving a mail mailing piece and how long by sector it will actually last in the home. So uh, for something like government mail, that will hang, hang around for quite a long time. And uh, charity mail, even so, um, you can expect some pieces of mail to last up to seven days in the home. So. It's quite nice to get that. We have lots of research and insight there into mail, what works for different age groups, why people like to receive mail above other media channels, and what people think about GDPR and things like that. So there's loads of stuff you can glean from our website around that. We also offer our clients access to a lot of different media tools, which would cost them quite a lot of money to have in their own right. Um, things like Mintel reports on the state of the market actually can cost up to £10,000 each and we can provide things like that to our clients for free. Um, most of my clients out of all of these tools, um, TGI isn't a big attitudinal survey, so it tells you what people are thinking about things in the market. Nielsen is around media spend, so it's you can have a look and see what your competitors are spending on different media channels. But Ubiquity, you can actually look at your competitors' mailing packs and see what they're mailing to your potential customers. And the one that my clients use the most is 3M VAS analysis, which allows you to actually heat map your mailing packs so we can actually tweak them and improve return on investment from mail. So we can suggest changes to the creative that will improve the performance of how much people actually read in the first few seconds that that item lands on the doormat. So, um, so that is something that people really pay a lot of attention to. Basically, you've got three seconds when an item lands on your doormat um, to grab that attention. And mail is kind of different to other media channels because people touch it. So it has a, an effect on long-term memory encoding in the brain, even though um, they don't realise that this is happening. So that first three to five ex second exposure is quite critical in whether mail will perform for you as a channel. So using the visual attention service will actually give you an indicator of what parts of the pack are being looked at by your prospective customers and also um, what whether your most important messages are getting across, whether they're seeing your brand, all those kind of things. So it's all critical stuff that you need to consider when you're producing mailing pieces. So this is an example of one for Westfield Health. So you can see that the brand is being seen, offers are being seen. Everything that you need to be seen within that mailing pack is clearly being read in those first important seconds. So the right impressions are being made. And this is uh, the gaze trail. So what they're looking at first. So they're looking at your brand quite quickly. They're looking to see that it's addressed to them and they're looking at the offer. So all the important parts of that main impact are seen. Um, we offer a whole range as well at market reach of data services. So they work almost like an agency in my planning team. So we have media planners, data planners, and people like that that work to us at Royal Mail. And their data expertise is actually free to my clients. So um, you can give us a particular challenge that you want us to work on, and we can take that away and use uh, socio-demographic profiling to produce um, suggested mailing plans for you. Um, we actually own the Home Movers file at Royal Mail. So we can provide home movers data if people are moving house. We provide data cleansing service, returns management, 
but the most key thing that most of my clients use is the expertise in planning mail and this is something we've developed over quite a long period of time so our expertise in data planning it's much wider than just looking at um, normal socio-demographic tools like Cameo and Mosaic um, we can do things like overlay store locations all those extra things um, that may not be considered for mail my data planners will know to do so there's a huge amount of work that goes on behind the scenes to produce better um, planning for your data as well um, we also offer a range of incentives as well for clients to test direct mail so we offer first-time user discounts of up to 15 percent uh, we have offer advertising mail test discounts so if you're doing uh, um, new potential campaigns that you've never tested before looking at different things then uh, potentially we can offer you discounts from that uh, business mail testing we offer up to 30 percent discounts on and we also offer a scheme for growth if customers are going to increase volume seriously um, we offer discounts for that and the moment we're actually running a special incentive for to support clients through covid so at the moment we're actually offering our customers extremely big discounts to mail and uh, particularly we focus that on certain sectors where they we think they will have the greatest difficulty to overcome covid so that is particularly the travel sector and charity we've uh, made it a lot more accessible to them to achieve the incentive it is proving so popular that 75 percent of the volume is already gone so it's it's a very popular incentive um i thought it would be very remiss of me not to have a little discussion about what the current environment is for mail at the moment and what the market looks like so this is a little snapshot that my data planners have put together so certainly from Kantar, we've heard that eight only eight percent of consumers actually think that brands need to stop advertising right now but they want them to be uh, behaving in a certain way. And I've certainly seen communication from my brands, which is much more subtle. It's not about selling uh, stuff. It's about saying we're still here to support you during this difficult time. So it's those kind of messages that are coming from my clients and uh, not exploiting the situation, but just keeping people informed of what's going on in, with them as a brand. Um, it would be things like store opening hours, those kind of communications that are going out. And we've seen brands change the way that they've responded. So, for instance, uh, Premier Inn are offering uh, rooms to key workers. Um, Saga are offering refunds and holidays on cruises. And they've offered two cruise liners to the NHS to use as hospitals. Uh, Virgin Action have frozen membership fees. Iceland were the first to offer priority shopping times for vulnerable people. So there's a lot of brands out there that are making changes. I've certainly seen from some of my clients that I've worked with, there's a big consideration about how they will support the NHS later on in the year once their brands start to open up. So uh, Welsh Rugby Union are looking at potentially giving clients uh, their tickets away to NHS workers uh, as a result of to show their support for them working through these difficult times. So we actually, this is actually from our JIC mail tool. So we've actually looked at the commercial actions that people are taking from receiving mail at the moment, and still people are actually buying stuff, using voucher codes, planning purchases, discussing it, visiting shops, offices, or going online. So people are still actually taking commercial actions as a result of receiving mail and to be fair there is a lot less mail in the network at the moment so you have really great cut through on the doormat when it arrives so you're not competing with other pieces at the moment in our network so and we still see that mail has high engagement rates across all sectors so be that charity publishing mail order um, people are still very much engaging with it because they are at home and they've got time to engage with it. Um, generally, in a normal environment, people will put mail aside to the end of the week and contemplate it at the weekend, but people have time at the moment to look at mail in more detail. So I certainly have seen some of my clients who are braver in the catalogue world actually produce 
um, more um, and better response rates to some of their mailings because they have huge cut through at the moment. So commercial actors, people act on mail they receive from all sectors. So you can see here, <laughs> chemist optical supermarket mail, generally because it's got vouchers attached, uh, people are reacting and still in quite high responses to it. Um, and these are the kind of uh, brand messages that you can send out to clients. So uh, you can put critical information into people's hands like store opening times, guides to people um, for what online options you've got for shopping, communicating that to people, what your delivery aims are at the moment because they've changed for a lot of my clients. Um, you can target key messages there have been a lot of government communications that have gone out over the past few weeks over what's happening with stuff locally for people. You can you can be supportive. So I've seen some really good mailings. One of my clients is Celtic and Co. And they sent out a really nice message to say, um, we're just here whenever you want us. Um, here's a nice discount to come and shop with us. So it's just a reminder. Um, so it just gives you an idea of what's out there in the market and uh, that's it so I'm quite happy to take any questions that anybody has for me great thanks Sarah that was awesome um Nothing. you've flown through that I know uh I would never be able to do really it quickly, quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um I could have taken a long time yeah. but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no we've got some um, we've got some questions flying in already so why don't we start with going through some of those um i've got a question here from fiona white and i'll yeah fiona i'll reply to you properly afterwards but sarah i don't know if you've got any advice on that now the, uh, can you see her question she's asked how does the vas uh, system work on leaflets already produced yes it it does but it gives my clients the opportunity to send me stuff before it goes to print so that's why it's quite a useful tool because they can just send me the pdf um so they can tweak it really quickly but yes customers can send me pdfs through and we can run it through VAS, and i can suggest there's also um a certain amount of knowledge that goes behind it so you can't just take the VAS and take that as a written rule because you need to also to consider what sector the client is mailing to what audience they're mailing to and timing of the mailing, etc. So there's a lot of other things that go into that. So generally, whenever I send a client the VAS report, I don't just send them the VAS report, I send them commentary on what is good for that sector as well. So there's other stuff that goes into it. You can't just take the VAS and say that's as written. You need to put a bit of thought behind what audience it's going to and stuff like that as well. Yeah, so that kind of highlights why it's important to get in touch with you as a sort of bigger picture type of thing rather than just use these I mean these these tools are great to use on their own but also there's as you say the, the sort of context behind it which somebody with your experience can offer um also I guess it's useful for uh for trying or trialing a number of different designs to see which one should work best yeah, I have to say it nearly broke me when I had a client who sent me 11 different catalogue fronts and asked me to analyse them. And But it was pretty obvious which two would be the best. So you can generally yeah. tell after a lot of experience, you generally know which ones are going to perform better. But yeah. there's a whole uh, lot of stuff that we have. So as well as the stuff, that the tools that I've mentioned, we also run creative workshops for our clients at Raw Mail. So we can give you um, creative eye tracking workshops and they actually it's all free of charge. And we tell our clients um, this is our knowledge of what is good and what is bad in direct mail. So it'd be things like um, circles are better than squares. So if you're going to put something, an offer on a mailing piece, it's better to put it in a circle rather than a square, which is a bit of a strange thing, but it, it is definitely true. So, uh, and it's been proven a million times when my customers have mailed. Um, uh, there's some quite interesting packs. I've seen Jojo Mammon uh, mail recently where they've put the offer in a very small band at the bottom 
of the mailing piece and people if you put it through vas people just don't see it so uh it's incredible because people um i know companies invest huge amounts in um what do they call it user optimization on website pages and that type of thing to make sure that all the right things are in the right places and you got the right call to actions but it's surprising how few people do that with their print and it's i mean services like this are they, they don't cost anything it's crazy so um it's definitely worth doing yeah people always ask me is this really free how much does it cost and uh and it, because they think it's free they think it's um not as good as yeah. uh, potentially other yeah. services but it is potentially yeah. really mind-blowing but raw mail are prepared to make that investment because they know that if a client can get mailing to work really well for them and improve their return on investment in mail they will do more so and it drives mail drives our parcels business as well at raw mail so things like catalog direct mail drive parcels as well um it didn't take me long to realize when i worked at parcel force at that side of the business that my clients that were doing catalog direct mail did twice as many parcels as people who didn't do it interesting interesting insights got a question here from mickey cox um is there a lot of dm in the b2b market generally from my perspective obviously we see the direct mail is actually printed um approximately 50 percent of our customers are are in b2b market so they're serving um they're serving you know the b2b themselves and yeah they're doing just as much direct mail as b2c i'd say less volume so they're doing it more targeted um but they're perhaps spending a bit more on each piece so to get better cut through because obviously if you're if, you, if you're in b2b you've got to get through the secretary you've got to you know sometimes your mail might get sorted by an executive assistant or by um by secretary or receptionist so generally people are doing they're doing you know it can be really simple things like a printed envelope or a colored envelope or they'll um they'll they'll put some sort of really eye-catching messaging on the envelope or or even uh, send it out in polythene which you can get um recyclable biodegradable options at the minute so that you can see the message without having to open it um that sort of thing sarah what's your in, what's your input on this i have a couple of clients who are really big in b2b marketing and uh, that would be um shelving companies and um there are sort of catering companies and stuff like that that are quite big in b2b um, but the problem is the intelligence that is there behind the B2B market is not as good as it is in B2C. So things like Ubiquity and Nielsen and those tools um, go to a panel of business to consumer customers. So it's very in, in, easy to get the information on B2C mailings. It's very difficult to get the feedback on B2B. So it's a lot harder to get the marketing information behind what goes on in B2B. But JIC Mail actually does have specific information on business mail. So there is actually specific stuff on business mail in JIC Mail if you want to look at measurement and stuff like that for business mail. So there is some stuff that goes on behind it, but I agree with you, niche, more niche mailings, uh, lower volume, but higher specification mailings tend to go um, B2B. So uh, there's a lot more effort put into B2B marketing but it tends to be lower volume. That's great, thanks. And um, yeah, we're just working through the questions in the chat at the minute, then we'll get to the, the Q&A section. Um, Mickey Cox, that's JIC Mail, J-I-C. Um, we'll yeah. send out some more information on this afterwards as well. Question from the Family Law Company. Do you think this would work for professional services? Now, I'm presuming this is a uh that professional services are serving a mixture of b2b and b2c um we have a number of clients in professional services for which we produce obviously the usual stationery etc but also a lot of direct mail and tends to be the more go ahead and um the professional services companies that are taking a slightly different approach to customer services and trying to 
step away from being the traditional sort of solicitor, accountant, lawyer type um, that are using direct mail and printed communications to get their message across and particularly to um, for things like content marketing because if you're sending out any sort of knowledge based stuff which a lot of professional services do because they obviously got a lot of knowledge um mail is a really really trusted way of doing it and i'm sure sarah's got lots of stats around this and i, I know i've seen a lot of stats around how how much more trustworthy printed communications are compared to digital um people tend to hang on to it longer and they tend to trust it longer and that's why content's really good particularly if you're targeting specific industries you can get you know you can do you can get really really specific with the both of the design in terms of personalizing that for an industry and the imagery and the content um but also with the data sarah what's your take on this i think the data is hard to get so there is less of it and certainly since gdpr data has become harder um we don't provide as free data um as free a option for data we used to sell third party lists at raw mail we don't do that any longer the only one we sell is home movers which is um business movers that we own um so we've kind of taken a step back from that space because we're quite risk averse um but people like experian will have data sets out there um, yeah. to mail to but i also think that um the thing to remember as well is it won't always work on the first try so it's not worth just sending one piece out and then saying well i'm not gonna do it again because i didn't get enough of a response you need to give mail a couple of tries because it has a drip drip effect which lasts over a longer period of time mm -hmm. i also think when people see a mailing piece from a company it's a statement about your brand so it says that you're substantive and you're real. Um, in reality, you could potentially be operating from a garage and some eBay traders actually do, but producing a nice catalogue with your product featured in there says that you are a substantive brand and that's what people are judging you on. And it can be down to things like the paper quality that you use, mm -hmm. says a lot about the brand. Um, the envelope that you send it in, whether it's got your branding on it, all those kinds of things are judgment calls that people make when they're going to open or not open mail. And mail does hang around in the house for a long period of time. Um, a little anecdote I have about that is I used to work with a charity called the Bible Society in Swindon, and they were forever being chastised by Roma because the response envelopes that they received back from theirs were maybe and so out of date because he held on to these mailing packs for four years before they felt like sending it back with the donation. So that's the kind of length of time that mail can survive in the home. But generally, um, we say... Oh, we're losing you, Sarah. I think your connection, your end might be a bit patchy at least seven don't it? ah you're back i've got a whole box full of emails. yes so you're breaking up um in fact you've disappeared we can see a frozen version of your face but we can't hear you at the minute is it the same i'm presuming it's the same for everybody um we'll get back to that i think that question, particularly around the professional services, um, great question from the family law company there. And I'm sure that uh, Market Reach have got some industry specific stats and help for that. Um, looks like Sarah's disappeared. So wait for her to come back. There's a few great questions in there, which I think I'll wait um, for Sarah to come back, particularly Joe Carroll's question. About the calls to action because um sarah will have some really really good insight on that let's just look over to the questions and answer section and just see if there's any anything in there no, it looks like sarah's coming back hopefully oh, I'm back. ah you're back Hooray. that's good the joy 
Great. The joys of technology. But yeah. what are the, uh, <laughs> people's experience of mail from a young age is positive. It's things like birthday cards. So therefore, um, we've got an innate tendency that's built into us to expect a positive experience from mail. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've got any specific insights as well for the professional services industry. It might be might be a good idea if I put you in touch with the family law company um, so that you can give them some sort of industry specific insights. Cause I'm sure you've got some. Um, yeah, moving on. I don't know if you can see the uh, yeah, would be good. Yeah, great. I don't know if you can see the question from Joe Carroll. It's a great question. Um, typically, what calls to action tend to work best? From your experience and insight, Sarah. Depends on the mailing piece. It depends on the mailing piece. So door-to-door -door vouchers work very, very well and offers. So... We've lost you again, Sarah. The offer. Oh, you're back just about. Um, it's a bit. Um, even if. You keep breaking up, I'm afraid. So we can't. It might be. The free. Yeah, Sarah, you're, you're breaking up a bit. MP. We can hear approximately one word in every seven. It's not scientific um, research, it's just my guess. Um, okay, let's move on to uh, questions and answers in the Q&A section um, while Sarah Sarah's Wi-Fi has a chance to recover. Jen Macy's asked a question about um, best use of direct mails. Target audiences are currently working from home and aren't at their business addresses. And that's a great question. It's one which um, we've all been asking, I guess, those of us who are in B2B. Um, the simple answer is, it's too easy to look at it. You might have to just wait until they're back. Um, and when they are back, really delight them with something so even if it's something as simple as you know a little card and a bunch of flowers or a little card and a box of chocolates just to say great that you're back welcome back to work um the other thing is that if you're producing really really good and useful and relevant content um and you can provide a really really secure way for customers to upload their home address data then you might be able to get um, get some content out on that way. For example, we're just about to launch some activity packs for kids and adults. So um, without stealing the thunder too much, we're we're going to be launching some activity packs. We use colouring in sheets and activity sheets, some sort of paper crafty stuff. Um, hopefully, we'll be launching that later this week or early next. And the idea is that it's a genuinely helpful thing for. Um, marketing people and business owners who are working from home and trying to keep the kids occupied so you might need to really really look at your strategy and think do you know what you're not really going to be successful if you're trying to do the hard sell right now um different of course if you're selling something that people have a genuine need for at the minute um but it's a, it's a good idea to try and get some sort of content into the hands of your customers even if they're working from home and if you can if you can provide a secure way of getting their data and storing it and removing it as soon as you finish with it, um, then people tend pe people will will bite. Looks like Sarah's still struggling with the technology. Um, any new questions come in? Yeah, I've had a comment from Alison Lee there. I don't know if anyone's seen my LinkedIn post from last week. Um, Alison Lee of the truly scrumptious chocolate parties company sent me a lovely card last week. 
thanking me for the webinar, the last webinar, um, with a really nice chocolate lolly. And my two year old daughter even let me have a bite. Um, but I mean, that's that's something that's you know it's relatively simple. Using a basic greetings card and one of her own products, it's really really great way of getting your name out there. Um, and it it really really it, you know, for for me really resonated and it really stuck in my mind too you know i'm not going to forget that in a hurry and that's that's the thing that mail and particularly lumpy mail where you're putting something a bit different in with it for example a chocolate it can really win seems like sarah's uh gone for good let's see if we can get sarah dialing in just the last few questions Apologies for this. First technological problem we've had with these webinars, I think, pretty much. Um, I knew it was going to happen at some point. Uh, but Jen Macy, hopefully I've answered your question to a degree there. Um, it's very much a, a time of trial and error, really. And um, that's just from my experience what we've found in the past few weeks has worked and we're going to do a bit more of it as well because it has worked um nobody really knows there's no precedent for these times as we've all heard millions of times over so trying to get some sort of mail out um and particular content something that's trustworthy something that sticks in their hands and something that they're going to keep around something that's genuinely useful to them at this time i'd say is 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 worth pursuing something that they can use now, something that answers questions and concerns they have related to working from home, related to lockdown, related to health, anything like that is going to be really, really helpful. I think we've answered most of the questions um, that we can. Joe Carroll's great question there about calls to action and what works best if we can't get sarah back on for this webinar then what i might do is record a quick interview with her or um get her to write down some some thoughts on that because it's a great question um sarah you're back i'm back hopefully great in theory the wi-fi permitting uh, well i I actually live in the middle of Plymouth city centre, but I have the worst Wi-Fi. It's <laughs> it's mad. All around me, there's super fast broadband, but not where I live, funnily enough. Typical. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, no, well, I've I, rattled through. Sorry, yeah, I've, I've rattled through some of the questions, um, but I think you're in the middle of answering Joe Carroll's question about what call to actions, calls to it, action it, work best. It is really dependent on the sector, the brand, yeah. and what offer you're trying to get across also what channel you're using so i would probably suggest vouchers work extremely well for door to door but maybe not that would be the preferred method for door to door so something a lot of people actually use channels like door to door for driving footfall into stores and things like that so a physical voucher works very well with that so it's totally dependent on the brand and the and what your offer is as to how to do it but Things like uh, the basic things of circles work better than squares, how you lay it out, little things like that can make a whole difference. So what I was saying about the Jojo offer, which was on a tiny strap line at the bottom of the mailing pack, not going to be as effective if, if they put it in a great big circle up in the top right of that, that piece. So it's those kind of things. It's the construction of the mailing pack. What margins you've got to play with as well so it is dependent on brand but again like i say if they've got a particular brand kind of question they wanted to ask i could answer that yeah yeah that's great um i don't know if you've got anything to add to jen macy's question in the q a um about advice on best use of direct mail b2b where customers are working from home and i've I've just quickly gone over some of the things we've done where we've put together stuff that's useful for right now. So kids activity packs and anything related to working from home. Um, and we found that people have signed up with 
given their home addresses, we've had to provide a really secure GDPR compliant way of them giving us the data, but it, that has worked quite well. You got anything to add to that? It's been really difficult uh, with some of my clients to actually contact them because they're working from home, particularly in something like the charity sector where they're mm -hmm. all furloughed. So yeah. that is has actually presented challenges and they've given me personal mobile numbers, which I wouldn't usually have. So yeah. um, that has kind of been quite a challenge and it is a GDPR challenge as well. So that's... Um, quite a difficult one but I would say it's it's almost like the debate that one of my clients has who provides mailings to tradesmen because a lot of them actually work from home so it's very difficult then to say who would be a tradesman and who wouldn't be a tradesman because you can't identify them particularly by their address so yeah. um what they would do to overcome that is they looked at channels like door to door because it gives you big reach but less cost yeah. so that's why they looked at that channel um so that's the channel that my client has looked to for to overcome that problem for big reach mm -hmm. uh, but again mail is different than other channels because people tend to pass it on so even if it's not relevant to them they might pass that on to somebody else whereas in the yeah. past Obviously not at the moment where they can't share by household, but people talk about mail in a different way um, to other media. There's no way you're going to, you generally don't tend to forward emails from companies to people, but you might hand on something like a, a Jojo catalogue to somebody else that's got children. Yeah. So that's something that's kind of different about mail. Yeah. Yeah, great. I think that's the end of the questions, but one question from me, Sarah, is um, you briefly mentioned some of the discounts that are available. What advice would you give to the attendees if they're looking to um, looking to make the most of these discounts? If they're looking to maybe to maybe mail for the first time, what um, what advice have you got? volume is key when we have these incentives so um the there are sort of entry criteria uh, for getting the best prices for mail so for letters uh four thousand letters is where you start go to go into the territory where we sort it by postcode so mm -hmm. the price pricing comes down quite dramatically there um but yeah. first time user is available at smaller volumes for clients but probably four thousand five thousand items is where these schemes start to become available to you so it's yeah. thinking about that um criteria but the advice and everything that goes behind that i would probably channel it via you um originally so you can contact yeah. me with any clients who've got queries they can come via you and I can yeah. say this is what I would suggest um, because um, it depends on so much depends on the actual scenario and probably a good stat I can give you about mailing success um, is that 50% of the success of a campaign is in the data. So data is all important and really key to the success of what you do. 25% of it is in the creative. And the rest of it could be down to things like the weather. So for my client Celtic and Co, it doesn't matter if spring is really hot and sunny, it's bad for them because they sell lots of jumpers and slippers and woolly hats. So therefore, um, there's nothing I could do to control the weather. So if they land at that time of year, their sales are never going to be great if it's really hot. If it's really cold, so when we had all that snow in March, they had a fantastic time because people were buying. Oh, a couple so, of years ago, yeah. Since, yeah, so that was brilliant for them because everyone was still buying jumpers in March, April, where they wouldn't usually be. So um, it's thinking about the things you can control in a mailing campaign. So you can control the data, you can control the creative. And if you influence those elements, you, you're creating the best chance of success for your mailer. Yeah. Yeah, and um, just going back to your first point, um, 
case in point, we've got a customer who sells speciality food ingredients by mail order. Um, obviously, extremely busy at the minute, but um, they were doing a mailing at the beginning of the year, and it was cheaper for them to mail four thousand than three thousand because of those yes, mail sort rates. And that's something they wouldn't have known if they hadn't been speaking to somebody who knew. So it's well worth speaking to your print or uh, mailing house partner um, about that, and something that we always check as well. Um, Another thing is clean your data. That's what I was going to ask next. Thanks for temporarily forgotten what I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Most important, a lot of customers are really reluctant to clean data because there's a cost to it. Um, Raw Mail can give you a free data audit so we could tell you what state your data is in with no obligation to fix any of it. And we tell you what the cost is to fix it. But the truth of it is you are just throwing money away if you don't clean your data. At home movers, fifteen generally 15,000 people a month register with us to move address. So that's an indication of how quickly your data can be wrong. So within six months, um, your whole database can have changed quite dramatically. And I have a client in North Devon who had resisted for years cleaning their data and it wiped 800 pounds off their mailing costs when they finally cleaned it because they just weren't mailing people who weren't there anymore. Yeah. So although it's a toughie to bite the bullet and to do it, um, it's quite important. And as you develop your use of mail at a later date, it makes a difference to the discounts you get from us on, on whether that data on that letter is machine readable for us. So if we can read the address and it's done properly and formatted it properly, then that makes a difference to the price that you're getting from all mail. So um, it has a, a cost implication as well for clients that they don't yeah. realise. Yeah. And that's all things that um, generally people just don't know unless they're working with somebody like, I mean, us, for example, we, you know, we've, we're experienced with working with direct mail and raw mail. And there are tricks to the trade, like um, Sarah's just saying. So it, it definitely pays to to consult with your print and mailing partners on that type of thing. Um, I think that brings us to the end of the questions. I can't see there's any more come in. We're at just about 20 past 12 now, so pretty good for timing. Um, Sarah, thanks so much for joining. I'm sharing your slides Sorry around. Um, yeah, no problem at all. It's just the joys of working from home um <laughs> at least i can in... get three rolls again so yeah. that's good. <laughs> yeah same here <laughs> do get in touch with me if you want to uh, contact sarah because i can introduce you um and there are so many free tools and loads of insight and data that can help you fine tune and perfect your direct mail campaigns um it really really is worth it because a lot of these tools as we've been saying are free to use and they make a massive difference really really big difference so thanks for joining thanks sarah for um for your presentation and all your help with questions and answers no worries thank you thank you for and having me on your call no problem at all and i look forward to our next webinar which i'll be announcing if not this afternoon then first thing tomorrow morning and it's going to be a good one thanks for joining Thank you.